Hello and welcome to this What's New session for What is New in B1 Usability Packets versus 2022.08 release. This is a quality of life release uh, aimed at uh, specifically printer delivery, but we have a few other things in here. So let's get into it. And one of those other things is actually a new out of the box dashboard. So if you run B1 dashboards and uh, you also have uh, our cloud app uh, called cloud, uh, called Inspect. Uh, you should be able to get this uh, extra dashboard uh, out of the box that you can use uh, in order to see your various rejections, uh, deviations, supplier uh, information, and so on, uh, in terms of uh, what is going on in uh, Barn Cloud Inspect. So again, we are working with this. The, the more of the products you have, the, the more options you get from uh, the various dashboards. So um, if you have both, you will get this automatically for free. Second up is the B1 Printer Delivery Quality of Life features. There we have uh, four new features. Uh, the first one is uh, replace crystal report paths. So you have your crystal report definitions, and sometimes you need to uh, change those parts into some new parts because you switch server or um, or move them to a different place. Uh, and now you can use this uh, tool to do a partial search and replace on the path itself. So for example, if you have something backslash backslash old server, and it's now on some other uh, path, uh, new server instead, uh, and uh, it's on the subfolder now because you have more structure, uh, you can do that and it will essentially just search all the paths uh, with the backslash backslash old server and put in whatever you write in the new one instead. So fairly simple, but if you have a lot of crystal reports, this is, uh, uh, will save you a lot of time. Second up uh, is also uh, a nice feature, uh, might not be needed uh, as much as, uh, as the other one, but uh, if you use the B1 printer delivery macro command, um, you are uh, used to that uh, the first parameter you need to give is the number of this uh, report configuration. And uh, you can still do that, uh, but we now call that the old way of doing it. Uh, instead, uh, you are able to right click and get a grid, uh, or generate it for the, if you're doing it for the first time, uh, because then we have a global unique ID uh, and the reason this is needed uh, sometimes is that if you have this configuration and you export it and import it into a new database, it will get a new number. And then you would need to go into your universal function and update this number. By having such a grid, which is part of the import and export, uh, you will now instead be able to have this fully out of the box. The people who do templates and uh, for uh, for usability packets uh, will will love this feature, so they don't need to do this extra step after uh, a new import to a new database. Third option, very uh, something that might excite you too much, but please be in mind there's a lot of caveats to it. Uh, but it is the option to include email signatures in Outlook. Um, but there is some requirements. You can't. Uh, say sent directly with email signatures. It can only work if you actually save as a draft and display the uh, display. So that is uh, like option number three that has been there for a long time. But if you uh, use this new thought feature and you are doing HTML mails, you can actually get your uh, signature in. It's a small hack that is an Outlook. Uh, so, uh, but Again, it's only for those two specific scenarios. So please uh, try it out. Uh, but it's, if, if it's not for you, it's still better to have uh, the consistency of putting in the signature uh, from uh, directly in the report uh, action. The final option is uh, a very simple one uh, for the, the really advanced people. Uh, and that is, uh, we have the doc key keyword, we have the dynamic syntax, but um, we had never uh, imp uh, implemented that you could use the object ID, meaning sales order equals 17, uh, invoice equals 13, and so on. And if you, for some reason, wants to want to use that in the report actions, 
uh, for example, in some SQL uh, in the report action, you can now do that uh, if need be. Moving on to a totally different module, recurring invoices. Um, recurring invoices have uh, now uh, a support for the branch feature in SAP, uh, the standard uh, SAP branches uh, that if you turn it on, uh, you couldn't really use uh, recurring invoices anymore because whenever you make a new invoice, you need to choose what branch uh, it should belong to. You can now do that. Uh, same rules still apply in regards to warehouses and, and stuff, but uh, you now at least have the option to, to work in, sub, uh, in sub-branches uh, databases. And a few various other quality of life features, uh, like more intuitive error messages from various areas, uh, so it's easier for you to troubleshoot. Master Data Manager now can use uh, good a return request and goods return request in Form Settings Manager. Uh, the file exporter in Universal Function is uh, now have the SQL screens to be sizable. If you have a big SQL, it's, it's very nice. And the UDT handlers, uh, in the past, it just opened and the columns were whatever width they were. Now they actually try to auto resize after the, the opening of the screen. So small features, quality of life, uh, as always, uh, after summer holiday. Um, and that is uh, the things I want to highlight today. So as always, the new release is uh, out in preview now, but uh, we expect the final release, if all goes as planned, to be the 8th of August 2022. And as always, you find it on the download page, uh, download.boimit.com. So with that, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.